guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video that I have been dying to film. I have missed my Will I Bite videos so, so much. You guys know they are my favorite videos to watch and they are actually really fun to film because you kind of get to sit there and go through all the new makeup releases and kind of give your subscribers and your YouTube family your opinion on some new makeup launches. So I'm excited. There are so many things that are launching and since I haven't filmed this video in forever, I feel like this video is gonna be 100 hours long. If it ends up being long, I'm gonna try and keep it at like 20 minutes. And if I feel like it's getting long, I might just cut it and uh, update you guys on some new makeup releases maybe in my next one. Some indie ones I want to talk to you guys about are, of course, my favorite brand. One of my favorite brands, Super Beauty, just launched Moisture Matte Liquid Lipsticks. They came out with six shades and they are available for purchase. They are $18 each. I want to support and buy but I really don't need another liquid lipstick at all, like at all. That's enough. Hey, come here. Come on. Come on. Okay guys, Teddy wanted to join us too, so here he is to give you guys his opinion on new makeup launches, right Teddy? You wanna tell people what makeup to buy? He just wants to be included. He just wants to be included and held like a big baby. Look like a big baby. Okay, so back to my video. Another palette that I'm so excited for is the Saucebox Secret Garden palette and it looks to be available for pre-order I love the shades they chose. I love that blue, that orange. I'm really into berries right now. That lilac shade is beautiful. And I believe this palette retails for $45. I was very tempted to buy it, but I decided to hold back as I don't really need another eyeshadow palette right now. And there are a few other ones that I have my eye on that I want even more than this. But if this kind of floats your boat, I would totally recommend checking it out. And of course, I want to mention Blush Tribe. They are coming out with the Fall Fusion palette. That should be available for order soon. And the reason I really want this palette is because there are two shades named after two of my favorite YouTubers, Angelica and Paulina. So I definitely want to pick that up and support my friends, obviously. Also, Sugar Pill is coming out with a trick and treat two shades. There's a witchy matte black with sparkles and a sparkling metallic copper. These will be limited edition and $18 each. This is not something I personally would be interested in, but I know my friend Spooky Lips and Fat Hips has her eye on these already. Hopefully she'll pick them up, but I won't be buying them. Those are kind of the indie ones I wanted to talk about. Now I'm going to go on trend mood. As of what is current right now, Morphe is coming out with some new palettes. I'm honestly not very interested in these. One is called Boss Mood and then there's this other like blue orange situation that they are coming out with. I feel like I'm finally done with them after the whole Jaclyn Hill Walt debacle. I don't really want to tell you guys what to do with your money or your lives but I feel like we need to kind of like send a message to brands that it's not okay to fuck with people. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Natasha Denona has revealed her Safari palette. I can't believe this thing is $129 for an all matte palette. I feel like this is definitely somebody's makeup aesthetic, but it's not mine. And I can't imagine that there are a lot of people that are going to be interested in picking this up. It just, it reminds me so much of the Viseart Dark Mattes palette. I have that palette. It honestly is not my favorite palette just because I should have known myself better. Those shades are not my vibes. I know my friend Makeup Struggles loves her Dark Mattes palette. That's like her favorite Viseart palette. My favorite Viseart palette is just the neutral palette. So I know myself. I know I'd never use a palette like this. I can't believe she made another $129 palette. I think that's a little intense. Okay, I really want to talk about the Kat Von D palette, the new holiday palette that's coming out. The collection is called the Fetish Eyeshadow Palette Collection. 25 shades in matte, glimmer, metallic, and mega glitters. And she's also doing a blush and a highlighter palette with six shades. And then 
um, an everlasting liquid lipstick set. Now, this is set to launch 927 on Sephora. I actually heard, I feel like, I don't even know how to address the Kat Von D thing. I understand why people are upset. I totally understand. But, I've seen some people give this palette, like, really harsh criticism. And I'm like, but it's not, like, that much worse than the Saints and Sinners palette. Or, like, the 10-year anniversary palette. Like, people are making it sound like this is the first shitty Kat Von D palette that came to light after the whole anti-vax thing. And I'm like... This looks like all the other shit she's done. I think people are just realizing how whack some of her palettes look because they're already mad at her. I don't know. What is there's a word for that. It's like bias, like pre pre-created bias that you have towards something now because you don't like it. So everything that person does, you're automatically just not gonna like. I personally think this green shade is like calling my name. Uh, what is this called? I can zoom in. Uh Le Petite Mort or something beautiful like forest green shade there's a really pretty yellow as well as a purple will i buy this palette honestly i don't know the last Kevin d palette the holiday palette i bought because i was kind of like in the hype of things and i think we all like think every new palette is going to be the next mi vida loca palette and it's never it never is it never is as good as the mi vida loca palette so i don't know i know Kat Von D is canceled in a lot of people's eyes, so I don't see her, you know, selling out by any means. So, you know, you might benefit from the situation and catch it on clearance or something. I'm scared my dog's gonna eat my earring. Okay, and then Viseart is coming out with two new palettes. They're doing a Grand Pro Volume 2, which is gonna be a Muse Beauty Pro exclusive, I believe. And then they're doing a Libertine palette, which they just announced, and this will be available on Beautylish. Grand Pro, I actually bought the first one. It was an all-matte palette, and I quickly realized that I wasn't going to get enough use out of it. And that palette was expensive. I believe it was like 100 and something dollars. And I just couldn't afford to keep it. And then the Nine Pan palettes, the... I can't remember what they're called, but they, they've done two other Nine Pan palettes, and... I bought the first one. I wasn't impressed, so I never bought the second one. This one has some interesting shades from the sneak peek, but I'm not going to go out of my way to buy this one, guys. So just want to keep you posted, though. Uh, ColourPop is coming out with a new collection. It's called their Fall Edit. Is anyone surprised? Like, I just, I just, I can't. I'm not surprised anymore. But they are doing a Super Shock highlighter palette, which I'm confused about because I thought the Super Shock formula was too sensitive to not be in an airtight container, so I'm confused about that. I would definitely watch out if you're thinking of picking that palette up because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be airtight. So that's my first concern. The Lux lipsticks, I like some of the shades, but like I wouldn't ever wear like a gray like that, so I don't know what the point of buying that bundle would be. I don't love their Supernova shadows. I'm sure they've improved the quality from the one I, the few I have. But again, those are very basic shades, so I'm not interested. I'm not going to lie, the eyeshadow palette is, you know, I have a weak spot for the ColourPop eyeshadow palettes, and this one is kind of sucking me in, but here's the thing with ColourPop. I always fall for the hype and buy a palette as soon as it comes out, and then two weeks later, I can get it for 20% off. So what I'm going to try and do is hold myself a little bit accountable and try and just wait it out so I can get it on sale or just not get it at all because I literally have ColourPop palettes that I have swatched for you guys and then I've never used again. So just a little um, note to myself. Nord Bobbi Brown's holiday collection is now available on Nordstrom. I heard a lot of people talking about the Bobbi Brown highlighting and glow highlighting powder duo. I actually own a Bobbi Brown highlighter and I don't use it often enough. And as adorable and cute as this packaging is for this highlighter, I'm going to have to pass on the duo, and then they have a few other things. Honestly, Bobbi Brown is not some a brand that I'm very attracted to, so I will be passing on all of those products. Okay, you guys, I know a lot of different people have a lot of different opinions on the NARS Holiday Collection. They are doing some fun stuff, though. I think it's cool. I like the whole studded look of the packaging. These eyeshadow palettes are so grungy. I don't know who's planning on picking these up for the holidays. It's definitely not my holiday vibe. I am kind of tempted by the face palettes because NARS does do some 
cool face palettes, but I just bought their Atomic Blonde palette that came out pretty recently. So I pretty sure I don't need these guys, but they are cool. I don't know when these things will be available, but yeah, they definitely have kind of a interesting grungy vibe going to them, which is very different for holiday. Kim Kardashian is coming out with a cherry blossom collection. I am moderately interested in this eyeshadow palette. I somehow started collecting KKW palettes. What happened was I bought the Makeup My Mario palette and then it was Labor Day and the classic palette was on sale. So I bought that and I'm okay with paying the sales price for these palettes. I'm just not okay with paying full price for these palettes because Kim Kardashian beauty shipping is like eight dollars so what I do is I wait out until it's on sale and then I buy it because at least that way I can justify the price being kicked off for the shipping you know so that's something okay here is a launch I'm actually like ridiculously excited for the Huda Beauty precious stones palettes there are five palettes with nine shades each they're twenty seven dollars a piece I am definitely going to get the blue and the green one for sure because those are like really calling my name. Everything else I already feel like exists in the market so I'm not especially like dying for those ones but god those palettes are such a spectacular idea from her. I just think it's so smart because even though they are priced quite affordably, you know she's going to make more money selling smaller palettes which is why she keeps coming out with them. So good for her. Like make that coin girl. I had originally purchased the four original mini palettes that she came out with. I didn't like those. I have her rose gold palette, I have the rose gold remastered palette, and I have the desert dust palette. Those all have a really good formula in my opinion and the minis did not hold up to that quality. She then came out with a coral one and a metallic one. I passed on both of those because again those shades were just not my vibes but this one I got my eye on them and they come out September 21st so I definitely plan on picking some of these up. So Urban Decay came out with a new eyeshadow palette. It's called the Elements Eyeshadow Palette. It includes 18 new shades from bright mattes to holographic shimmers and it is $56. Now this palette definitely gave everyone Mimita Loca vibes. I was initially very drawn to the packaging and I was like oh my gosh maybe I should get this palette and I thought about it and I thought about it and honestly I just don't really think I'll ever use it. It's one of those like typical Urban Decay like metallic like packed palette. But I think a lot of the people I've seen talk about it that received it in PR so far, a lot of people say they wish it had more matte shades. And I don't know, it's kind of a big palette so I know I won't reach for it that much. And the other thing too is Urban Decay posted a video swatching this palette and they only featured the swatches on a light skin tone which really rubbed me the wrong way because I know they discontinued the naked palette and they did like a whole naked funeral like for the naked palette and they had models with different skin tones on that video but they can find people with different skin tones to swatch their new palette like that was a little bit shady it kind of rubbed me the wrong way so I'm not going to be supporting that particular palette now here is a holiday palette I'm really excited for. This is actually kind of pathetic that uh, a Too Faced palette has gotten me feeling all kinds of ways but this is a Too Faced gingerbread spice eyeshadow palette which is supposed to smell like the holidays. Holy crap. I don't know. I have really been enjoying the Tutti Frutti palette from Too Faced, the Razzleberry one because I picked that up and then today on my eyes I'm wearing the pineapple one because I just got that and I filmed this look for like a first impressions get ready with me so if that video is up I will link it for you guys but yeah I've been enjoying the Too Faced formula and there's something very holiday about this palette the packaging it's all it's all sucking me in so I'm gonna get it you know what I'm gonna get it so what sue me the Naked Cherry palette definitely caused a stir when people kind of found out about the palette's existence and Urban Decay has confirmed they're doing a whole collection. There's going to be a palette, three lipsticks, two eye pencils, and all nighter cherry scented. I'm personally not a fan of cherry scent. It makes me think of cough medicine so I'm going to be passing on the all nighter for sure. The only thing that really kind of drew my attention 
on this launch is the burgundy colored eye pencil. I think that's a beautiful color. I think for the holidays that'll be beautiful in the waterline. Something about this palette, it's just, eh, I don't know, it seems very blah. I feel like the Naked palettes, you know, they really fluffed up the game when they first launched and now it just looks like another Kardashian palette. Do you know what I mean? So I wish they had done something a little bit more bold, kind of made it more like the Gingerbread palette, really thrown in some reds that had like a punch to it. This one just does not have enough punch for me. So I'm going to be passing on that. Okay, here's something I'm really excited about. I cannot wait for Charlotte Tilbury to come to Sephora. There's so many things I want to try out from her. This Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette and blush are like really sucking me in. I was almost going to order it on her website, but Charlotte Tilbury is honestly like really spendy. So I bought her foundation and her setting powder because I know her setting powder is just going to like rock my socks off. And yeah, like I was really tempted for the Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette and the blush, but I really just could not afford to shell out $90 on two products. So yeah, I got my eye on them, but for now I'm going to wait and see. Okay, really quick, let's talk about the new Makeup Geek Pumpkin Spice Palette. This is nine shades for $35. I actually feel like they've dropped their price because I own two of the Makeup Geek nine pan palettes. I have the Manny palette as well as like the neutral palette they came out with last year. And I'm pretty sure I paid more than $35 for that. So most of these shades are existing shades. They have one shade that is, two shades that are exclusive. There's Dreamsicle and Jack o Lantern. I honestly, I know there's a lot of controversy right now with Makeup Geek and her videos and this and that and all of the shit, but she does make solid shadows. So if you want nine shadows for $35, honestly, that's a freaking steal. I thought her palettes were more than that. So if you can get nine Makeup Geek shadows for $35, I think that's a really solid deal. So definitely check that out. Kylie Cosmetics is coming out with 28 new single eyeshadows for $7 a piece. Now, I had posted a picture on my Instagram stories saying, wow, they look so much like the ColourPop palettes, like the ColourPop single, like empty palettes that you can buy, and the ColourPop shadows as well. And I know there was like a rumor saying that ColourPop and Kylie are made in the same lab. And it's actually been confirmed. I didn't do any research on this. My friend Georgia Harris actually told me, she DM'd me and told me on Instagram that ColourPop, KKW, Kylie, and that new skincare line were all owned by, or are all owned by the brand or whatever called Seed Beauty or something. So keep that in mind. A lot of the products, I mean, just from like the eyeshadow palettes I've owned from both brands, I definitely see similarities in the formula and stuff. So if you don't have money to buy Kylie Cosmetics and you don't want to keep supporting her and the Kardashian clan, check out ColourPop because their products are very, very similar. I'm not trying to tell you guys what to do with your lives. I just felt like they were very similar so you could probably save yourself some money and just buy ColourPop singles. Now, this palette is already on its way to me. It's going to be here on 9-13. I'm so flipping excited. It is the Pat McGrath. Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction Palette. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So it launched on her website. It has not launched on Sephora yet. I was trying to see if I could get it on Sephora because Pat McGrath's shipping sucks. But this time around, she launched it on her website and then she did a 10% discount code. So I was like, yes, I'll take 10% off. Thank you very much. And it actually shipped pretty quick. So I'm excited to get that as soon as I get it. You guys know there will be a swatch party on my channel and I would love to review that palette for you guys. So let me know if you are interested in that. I guess I should throw in about the 21 Days of Beauty. I have no interest in buying anything really from the 21 Days of Beauty. I did pick up the Lancome Mascara, the Monsieur Big Mascara, just because I am a bit of a fan of that mascara. I only tried it in the sample size and it was really good so I'm excited to own it in a full size and test it out. Fenty Beauty came out with a gloss bomb in the shade Diamond Milk and a diamond highlighter in the shade How Many Carrots for $38. This was in celebration of their one year anniversary. I think it's so great that they have been around for one year. Their foundation shade range really 
like fluffed up the game this year for beauty. So that's amazing. It's a great achievement. I think Rihanna's brand has just been killing it as far as unique products, really creating things that are unique to the beauty game, as well as just some really solid staples, a good foundation, eyeshadow primer, liquid liner, the Moroccan Spice Palette. Holy shit, that is an amazing palette. If you want to check that out, I would totally recommend that. Okay, another thing I'm really excited for Huda to launch is her new concealers. They are called the Overachiever Concealers. I love the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation. It's one of my holy grail foundations. I think it's better or comparable at least to Estee Lauder Double Wear for those of you OG YouTube and beauty enthusiasts that use Estee Lauder. Honestly, try the Huda one because it works great and it's not as drying on my skin. I think it gives me more of a satin finish, so I really, really like that. There's so many new holiday launches. I am so excited. So this Kevin Aquan palette is like a rose gold themed palette and it looks beautiful. I know they've come out with a few different ones already and I'm excited to see this one. Um, see if it will suit my skin tone because I've passed on previous ones thinking they wouldn't work on my skin tone. Another thing that looks beautiful is this Stila highlighting palette. It looks like a highlighter slash blush palette. It's hard to say. Um, I have the one from last holiday and that formula is really nice. It's kind of like squishy. If you put your finger in it'll kind of like dip. So it's really really cool and I don't know I would recommend it if you guys are interested in picking it up. Tarte already launched this insane holiday collection. There's eyeshadow palettes, there are blush palettes, um, a new, you know, Z palette from them, some new brushes. I used to drink all of this Kool-Aid back in the day, guys. I was such a big fan of the Tarte blush palettes that came out for holiday. I would scoop those up. I'd buy all the brushes. I'd buy, you know, the eyelash curler, all that jazz. And I get it. There's still people out there that are into that stuff. I personally am never going to get through a whole blush palette in my entire life. I recently sold some of the ones from previous years on my Poshmark as well. So you know what? If this appeals to you, that's great. Personally, I'm going to be passing on all of it because it's just not my vibes. Sugar Pill came out with a collab with Trixie Mattel who is a drag queen and Honestly, I think a lot of people were excited for this collection because it was neutrals and Sugar Pill doesn't usually do a lot of neutrals. I wanted to pass on this one because I recently bought a Sugar Pill Pro palette. If you guys want to look up how much our Sugar Pill Pro palette is, it's it's pretty freaking spendy. So I wanted to pass on this one because it wasn't really something I was interested in. But let me know if you guys picked it up. ELF came out with a Opposites Attracts palette. It is 18 shades, 9 warm tone, 9 cool tone for $14. I think there are people out there that are really going to love this palette. Personally for me, I've never used an eyeshadow palette from ELF that's like blown me away. The Mad from Mad Jewels palette is pretty good. I'll give it that. But I didn't want to just buy another palette for the sake of buying another palette and having my pile of review palettes just keep piling up. So I'm actually, I haven't looked, but I bet that e.l.f. palette is already sold out. So I'm excited to see other people's reviews on the palette, but personally, I will be passing on that. And Sephora Collection is coming out with some new pro palettes. I actually bought two of the first ones at launch. I think they launched summer last year, sometime around the 4th of July. And I actually didn't like the palettes, so I ended up returning them. But they're coming out with a Series 2, and these are $68. I believe I saw Tara Babies had picked up this the new nudes one, and she seemed to really like it. I personally won't be picking those up, but if you're interested in a giant palette full of really nice mauve shades, you might be interested in that. Becca Cosmetics dropped a new palette called the Volcano Goddess Palette. And honestly, the colors on the packaging, oh my gosh. Like, I was like, oh my god, Bic is about to fuck us up with this palette because I honestly thought it was going to be like a beautiful face palette because they're notoriously good at creating beautiful face palettes around the holiday time. I was so disappointed when I saw the inside of this palette. 
which is actually a good thing that I was disappointed because God knows I don't need another palette of anything. But yeah, that was particularly disappointing because I was really, I had high hopes for that palette from Becca. I hope Patrick Starr is done with his collabs with MAC Cosmetics. This new reveal that he has, or this is already launched, I know you can buy it. I think it's so weird that he's doing just like kits, so you have to buy the eyeshadow palette and the liquid lipstick. You can't buy separate, and so she's got two shades. It's called Oh No She Better Don't Kit for $42, and Boy About Town for $42.50. They're both $42.50, I'm sorry if I screwed that up. Um, I don't know, just uninspiring. I'm so sad because I feel like Patrick Starr has such a depth to his personality and you don't really see that in his collection. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Becca Cosmetics launched a Gold Lava 24 Karat Shimmering Light Pink Pearl $38 Highlighter. This one, I don't see the pink, but I think this is beautiful. Honestly, Trophy Wife is not an easy highlighter to pull off. I know a lot of people say like, don't get this one, get Trophy Wife, but Trophy Wife is a lot of glitter, you guys. I don't care if you point at the sky and hop on one foot and tell me it's not glittery. It is glittery. I think something like this would be a lot easier for people to pull off because the Shimmering Skin Perfector formula is amazing. Okay guys, last thing I want to talk about in this Will I Buy It video is the new Holiday 2018 Hourglass Ambient Light Edit unlocked palette is that what it's called I don't know it's $80 and includes six new shades and 5% to non-human rights projects so they'll donate 5% to non-human rights projects now I have two of the hourglass holiday palettes I have the one from 2015 and then I bought the one from last holiday I believe I skipped the one that was in the marble packaging which I believe was 2016 so yeah I actually really like them I know people have like they do the like an ounce per gram per your grandma's arm like what you get. I personally think it's a great way to dip your toes into the hourglass you know formula. A lot of us don't live in a city with a Sephora store so I don't have the luxury of going to my local Sephora and swatching all the hourglass powders and trying them all out and they're pricey so if you want to buy a bronzer from hourglass you gotta shell out fifty dollars so even though you're not getting the best value per gram per ounce per kilo per calorie it's a great way to try the the brand the one thing i will caution you is i can wear most of the shades in my palettes when i am um, not as tan so i tend to tan quite a bit in the summertime so i reserve my hourglass palettes for the winter time. I love their ambient formula, their blush formula, their bronzer formula. It's buttery, buttery smooth. So if you always wanted to try hourglasses powder formula, I think the palettes are a great way to do it. It does kind of break the bank, but think of buying each of those products individually. You're going to end up spending a lot more money. So I understand why people criticize the palette, but I also think there is a lot of opportunity to try the brand out, find something new that you might end up with. Okay guys, I'm scared to see how long this video is, so I'm gonna end it here. Tag me in any products you want me to feature in my Will I Buy It videos now that I am back on YouTube. I will be filming these a lot more often, and thank you guys so much for watching this, and I will catch you in my next one. Bye guys. <laughs>